Good evening. This is Pastor Omar. I'm preparing for my evening meditation on Periscope. You know, I'm very thankful because I get to start and end my days uh, in sunny Southern California, out here uh, at my koi pond, uh, and I'm very thankful. Good to see you, Montana. I'm thankful um, always for every situation. Um, I just realized. I just realized recently that um, it's important for us to um, be truthful and open in all things. Good to see you, Jehenson. This is Pastor Omar. Um, you know, I'm here as a broadcaster. I'm always um, open. And in my presentation, this is at my Koi Pond. Gabe Christ, good to see you. Love and Laugh, good to see you too. Um, I'm here at my Koi Pond. And we're going to talk about today how to be thankful or grateful even in tough times. And I was saying today that I'm very grateful and thankful that I'm here um, in sunny th Southern California um, in my backyard. Hey, Sam Brandon, good to see you, my brother. Hennis Brandon. And, uh, and uh, I just think it's very important for us to be very truthful. First of all, I want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to live uh, and raise a family in sunny Southern California. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate the love. Uh, and and uh, and I'm I'm a, a big Facebook user. I really, you know, I, I funny funny how I used to condemn Facebook, and now I'm a big user because I found on Facebook a great platform for me to. Um, <laughs> thank you. I uh, found a, a great platform. Um, yeah, I'm super OG for sure. I found a great platform um, for using Facebook as a as a means to do ministry. I've stepped away from the pulpit. They call me Pastor O because for many years I pastored uh, in pulpits specifically, in churches and, and doing that kind of work. But as I got uh, older and more mature in my work and development, I realized that I didn't like the, the confine of the pulpit. I like to be free to move around and to speak and, and to do, and, uh, and, I, and, and uh, God gave me that opportunity to do that. So I started out with this talk about uh, how Facebook is a, is a funny kind of thing. For the most part, people always put positive things on Facebook. They never put... Uh, anything negative and, and really I understand that because we are like just like me I try to be a very positive um, poster and post things that are uplifting but there's sometimes where stuff just happened in our life and it's just it's just crazy uh, you know I'm a proactive agent of change who who communicates so that others might be uh, healed liberated and appreciate appreciated that's the reason why I come on and sometimes people just need to be free to say you know what I'm I'm not feeling this moment I'm feeling kind of crazy uh, yesterday I was um, taking care of my pond and trying to get my fish. And, then, and a couple of days ago, I was just rejoicing at how many fish I had and how beautiful they were and how they were growing. I grew, I like to grow fish from little babies, and now they were big, bigger than my hand. And, uh, and it just made me feel good. And, um, but I realized that it was so hot here in Southern California, I needed to uh, put some more water in the pond. So uh, I did it. I didn't, I didn't think about you know, my normal routine of putting the chemicals in. I just poured in some water thinking that that would help. And uh, I went on to uh, my evening work. I, I, I work in a local church doing communion. When I came back, one of my most prized possessions of fish that I've, I've, I actually purchased, selected, and raised from a little, little fish was at the bottom of the pond dead. And uh, wow, I was like, man, that hurt my heart. One of my, one of my favorite fish is dead, but I was like, uh, well, something made me think about it a little bit more. I said, let me look a little bit deeper. And when I looked a little bit deeper, I realized not only one, but seven of my fish were gasping for air, dying, and I didn't know what I could do about it. Oh, uh, yeah, and I was like, man, it was sad. It made me feel sad. And then I realized that, you know, that's a part of life. You know, um, I think in the book of Job, one of the eight most ancient of, uh, of literary uh, scripts uh, found in the, uh, the ancient scripture said, The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of my God. Now, I'm not trying to blame my death on the death of my fish on God. God didn't have nothing to do with that. That had something to do with me being impatient, just doing what I do, trying to be in a hurry. And the sad part about it, it's not the first time it happened to me. It happened to me almost a year ago. And I'm like, I want to get to the point where I learn my lesson. Anybody out there want to learn your lessons and stop repeating your lessons over and over and over again? Yeah, I want to learn my lessons and learn them well. And, uh, and evidently in this time I didn't learn that lesson where I need to take my time and fill it up at the right moment. I was trying to do something different. And sometime in life we learn that there are some things that we just have to do and be consistent about it. Doing every, every time the same. And then some things we have to be different. Like sometimes I think we should go a different route home just to open up our mind and see different things. But I realized that um, I needed to post about that 
situation. I need to right up there and say, you know what? Today is still a great day. It's still the day that God has made. But today I'm not feeling it because I just killed a bunch of my fish that I raised from when they were little, little teeny fish. And I really felt bad about that. So how do I go on? My, my, my wife and children was like, well, how do you go on with that? I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to curse God and God. I'm not going to blame it on God. It was nobody's fault but my own. Some things we have to realize that some of the stuff that we're going through in life, it is our own stuff and we have to own up to it. Uh, and I say, man, I, I messed up. I own up to it. I did it. It was me who did that. So one thing we have to do that, then we have to acknowledge that if God gave you the opportunity to have a pond, how many people have a pond in their backyard, a sanctuary so they can have quiet time? If God gave me that, then God is not the enemy trying to destroy me from having that. I have to learn how to be a responsible steward of that. And God has given you and me great opportunities. He's given us great life and great situations. And we need to be responsible citizens in that, with that greatness. You know, he, he actually gives us the opportunity to be like him, to be gods. You know, I love the scripture in the Bible. It says, ye are little gods. Um, but uh, I don't think people really work with that too much. They, they're still trying to, um, in a sense, wait around, praying for prayers and hoping that God will come through. When God's saying, no, I'm not going to come through. It's going to be you to come through. So I'm hoping that whoever is going to rebroadcast this program and show it, that they will they will begin to accept the fact that you are a significant part of your life. Some of the stuff that goes on in your life has to do with you and what you do. And that, you know, everything's not going to be uh, joyous and happy all the time. There's going to be some times where there's going to be some sad times, like I lost all my fish, like the time I lost my house, man. All those situations were hard, rough situations. But I realized this, I am not my things. Did you hear what I said? And you are not your things, my friend. You are not your things. If you still have life and you still have breath, you don't have to worry about those things. Those things can be reacquired. You can get things again. If you have greatness in you, that greatness will come back out again and you'll be able to do more things. You are not your things. And there is a God. And that you. And sometimes you have to say, God, hey, God, look, hey, I'm not feeling this. I'm feeling real bad. I'm not doing this, but I'm going to be thankful anyway. I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are a great and wonderful uh, God. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be this wonderful being on the earth. So I thank you for all those people who came out and listened to me today. I hope that you can take home something with you, that you are not your things, that you have to acknowledge that uh, bad, bad things. Yes, you have to, you know, it says very true. We have our own flock responsibility, learn to grow. Yes, God has given us that responsibility to grow and we have to learn that. Thank you very much for helping me in that. I really appreciate when you interact with me because really, man, we, we, we're doing so much and we, we're, we're trying to blame it on everybody else. It's not, it's not my fault, it's their fault. It's their fault. My son was sitting in there. He could have told us to turn the water off or somebody else was doing that. He could have did that. But no, own up to your own stuff. Say, oh, I embrace it. It's mine. I'm going to learn for it. So my prayer was today, Heavenly Father, help me to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> That's one thing. And then I just came back with another resolve to say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Now I got some more. You know, I have some pretty big fish, a whole bunch of them, seven. Reality TV coach, good to see you. I love you. And I love those hugs that you give. I'm glad you came on board. I'm, t I'm teaching today about learning how to be thankful in every situation. That all situations won't be good. You might be in a bad uh, relationship. You might be in a bad marriage. But if you can say, okay, what's my part in that situation? I got that. You can say, Heavenly Father, give me the grace. Give me the strength to endure. Let me get through this situation. Get leading God me. And then after you get on the other side, guess what? You're going to find that that was an open door. Sometimes that relationship need to be uh, broken up. Sometimes you need to lose that fish. You need to lose that house or lose that comfortableness with that situation so that you can acquire and do something different. God wants to bless us with so many opportunities, but we be holding back, trying to hold on to the past, trying to hold on to the things that we think we accomplished and we got. That's not the way God flows. God flows in a wonderful way. He gives you and I responsibility to take charge of our life. So my prayer today is that, uh, in this short little meditation on how to be thankful in tough times, first of all, acknowledge tough times do come embrace them and they be real about it sometimes you need to post something bad on facebook and say this bad stuff happened to me but nevertheless i'm not gonna let this bad situation keep me down i lost seven fish out of my beautiful pond and i am grieving over it but guess what i will get over it i will not stay in that situation i'm gonna rise up from this thing you know uh can i receive good of the lord and not have other stuff to come in that's not so good and I'm, remember i'm not blaming this on god i'm blaming this on me i was the one that was impatient i was the one trying to push it real quick and trying to see something happen and trying to do something other than obey the laws and rules that I already know work. I was trying to be doing something super fancy and it did not work. And I had to suffer for that. But know this, I have hope 
of and the God of the resurrection. I have hope that God going to raise me up some uh, some more income and I'll be able to get me some more fish. And then now I have some more room to explore and do some other things. So it's a good thing because the circle of life is real. We come and we go. But while we're here, we want to make sure that our, our here is great quality and great worth. So I, I love you and I want to see you again real soon. So I'm making a commitment to myself like my sister uh, TJ, the reality coach, make a commitment to be consistent in what I do because I find that we're consistent in it and we consistently give thanks to God for everything that comes out of life. The, so, the good and so and sometimes the bad. He will do that. He said, I promise. There's a promise in the scripture that said he will work all things together for good to them that love him, to them that are called according to his purpose. Do you know God called you? The very fact that you're here and you got that very unique fingerprint. See that fingerprint? That's my fingerprint, but you got one too. It's very unique to you. And God God loves you and wants to make the best out of you. So it's a co-labor of love. So while I'm here, I'm always trying to share that with you. So listen, embrace the stuff. It's going to happen. Be bold enough to post it because somebody else is watching you. And if you always high, 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 you never have down low, you, you, you end up being like a, a perceived to be not real. Life has uh, bitter and sweet. Life has good and bad. Life has dark and light. It's all a part of the goodness that God wants to do. So I'm so thankful that you spent some time with me. I hope you got something to take home with you. Be thankful, embrace your stuff, and then be hopeful. I don't want to end without saying be hopeful. Be hopeful. I have a hope. God's going to bless me. Thank you for sharing. We always get good stuff. I'm glad to hear that. All a part of the plan. It is all a part of God's plan. Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that. God's got a great and wonderful plan. And he uses everything. I don't know if you remember my message that God is the great conservationist. Good to see you, Core Works. That's my wife right there. She got a great ministry there with Core Works helping people get their healing. I heard she only got three sessions left for healing. So I hope you take advantage of those three sessions. You can find her on Facebook at Core Works. Good to see you, J uh, Jay Cookie. I'm glad that you're joined. I'm just sharing here the love and sharing, hoping that I can equip people to understand that life got stuff in it. Uh, the shift happens and we are well in the shift. You know, and so sometimes, sometimes good stuff is going to come, sometimes bad things are going to come. But we know that the, the God that I call the great conservationist, he will take that good and he will work it out for your good. He'll take that bad and he'll work it out for your good. You'll wonder, why was I here? Why was I, what is this situation? And that's the holy hookup that God would give you. He would set up a holy hookup for you in the midst of your grief and your sorrow. Be real, acknowledge it. That hurt. I lost my fish. Mm, I'm hurt. I'm two days in it, but I'm going to recover. But then I start thinking, man, I got an opportunity. God's going to bless me. Thank you for inviting your friends. I'm so glad you invited your friends, Core Works, ULM. I love you so much. And that's that's what we do. When we're on this medium, um, we have to invite our friends. We have to interact. We're going to take this Periscope to another level. They don't know what they did when they made us individual broadcasters around this world. We're going to see something that, you know, something as bad as being on this thing called uh, telephone. They be like, you always on your phone. You always doing this. You always doing that. But I'm on there with a purpose. I'm on there to educate, to elevate, to innovate, to help other people so they can get the best out of their life. Because we're going to have some tough times, but we're going to be thankful in the tough time. I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I lost some fish, but I didn't lose my life because I am not my things. You remember that. You are not your things. You are more than your things. Yes, educate and elevate. That's what we're here for, my friend. So if you're using this medium, take advantage of it. Bless your friends. Tell other people about it. This is Pastor O. And until next time, I want to remind you, keep your hands clean and your heart pure. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. I'm out. I love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, have you ever had one of those moments when you're doing your, your broadcast and they won't let you out? I know TJ had it. I don't know how that happens, but I guess I'm not supposed to go yet. So I'm going to be here and I'm going to talk to you about today. What, what, what do we talk about today? Today's topic was how to be thankful in tough times. In this situation, I was talking about how yesterday, after having a wonderful day with my, my children, I came home to find that seven of my prized koi fish were dead. I don't know how that happened, but they died. So I wanted to teach people how to handle tough times. 
Uh, I noticed on, on Facebook, people only put the positive on Facebook. They put positive, 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 positive. And if you look at their life, it looks like nothing ever bad happened. But yesterday, I had to post yesterday that I'm not feeling so good today because I lost my fish. And guess who fault it was? Me. And nobody else to blame but me. I did it. And it, I am sorry about it. It was a terrible situation. But I had to realize this. Look, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. It ain't the worst of all possible world. I lost some fish. I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose my wife, my children. Everything is still good. I got the lesson learned. The bad part about this one, I had to have this happen twice. I don't know about you. Sometimes you have one, two. I'm not trying to see a third time where I lose my fish again or lose anything else like that. And the big thing is I learned I also need to take responsibility in my life and work with my family and work with my situation because stuff just happened you know and i don't want to be in a situation where it that kind of thing i made a bad decision and hurt my family or i made a bad decision to hurt some fish but i'm saying god please don't let that kind of bad decision hurt my family or hurt the loved ones or hurt the people around us so we want to have a, a direct communication with god we want to say okay father i accept it i'm thankful thank you for this situation thank you for how it happened i do believe that you will work this situation out that I can get even better fish, more prized fish than I had before. And that you can make another situation. In fact, you can give me a, you can just change this whole thing around and you can turn something that was a burden into a blessing. I know that's what you want to do. So listen, I want to try one more time to get out of here. Uh, so I'm going to sign off with one of my, my favorite things. But if you want to catch up with me, I'm Pastor Omar underscore, I'm Pastor underscore Omar underscore on Twitter. Um, Omar A. Muhammad comma thm on facebook check out my page i am on google plus i'm on all those other mediums i'm on yaso or uh, at um what is that uh instagram so you can find me anywhere i'm available thank you very much i appreciate that that's exactly where you can find me pastor underscore omar on twitter so i hope to see you again listen all things work together for good even this mistake and it gave me an opportunity to meet some other people listen i'll talk to you later stay with it stay informed Get on, uh, get on um, this, bro this periscope, you become a broadcaster, and be true to yourself, be true to God, and let the good times roll. This is Pastor O, I'm out, and my saying is, keep your hands clean and your, out, and your, your, hands clean and your heart pure. I'm out, I'll try again this time, let's see if I get out this time. Bye-bye! <laughs>